Mark, how do you feel about being on the cover of uh, the January, February Western Hunter magazine? Well, it's, uh, it's quite an honor. I'm, I'm super, super excited to be on the cover and uh, especially with the painting uh, Sonoran Magnetism, which is a, a local painting <laughs> showing the beauty of Arizona and the, and the landscape and the, the wilderness of Arizona. So yeah, it's super exciting, especially if it's the first time that you guys are doing the artist feature. Uh, it's, it's very cool to be the first. And I hope there's going to be a lot after me and, uh, and that uh, your readers are going to be able to, to discover the, the art and all the things that is out there in the West. And, uh, and that's kind of, um, you know, you guys are specializing in the hunting, but then there's everything that goes around, you know, the outdoors and all that. And, and I think the Western art um, has a lot to has a lot of connection with that. How has the West inspired um, so much of your work? Mm. Um, yeah, the West has, has been kind of a, a, a starter for me, like an inspiration um, to start painting because I, I was doing other form of art before, like um, mostly filming. Uh, I've I done 10 years of, of uh, music video directing and I worked with Disney animation on storyboard and colors and all that. So I discovered the American West as I was traveling to take photos and, and for inspiration for all my films and all that I was doing and, and start discovering those landscapes. And um, so I think that kind of gave me the, the desire to maybe express that through painting um, because the subjects are infinite, the light's so beautiful and, uh, and um, yeah, the horse, Cowboys, that was my first, you know, uh, inter, uh, entrance, I mean, to, to that, that whole world that the West is. But then, you know, moving here, you know, 12 years ago and living the life, that's what I always say is like, you know, it's, I see some people, you know, trying to paint the West without being there and it's, it's difficult. Like, you have to be there to understand the West and see what it is and, and if you want to paint it in the right way. So yeah, it's a big, big inspiration forever. And, and I think it's gonna keep going. <laughs> Absolutely. Kind of take us through the kind of the story behind or the meaning behind Sonoran Magnetism. Mm. Uh, so this, this painting, Sonoran Magnetism, is um, of two of my friend, um, Chris O'Connor. He's a, he's a cowboy here up in Paisen. And uh, Bo Ellis is, is another guy. He, he, I don't know where he's at right now, but he's also an Arizona cowboy and he, he's working on ranches. Two amazing human beings. And um, yeah, we, we, we did a lot of photo shoots together. I was following them up there. And, you know, and, and so I also witnessed a lot of monsoon clouds here and, and pretty incredible thunderhead formation. So the both experience Put together, I came up with this image where I really wanted to show the how you know small we are when when those nature phenomena happen, and um, and also the wilderness of of the the area with all the cactuses and all that to really show how those guys are pushing cattle in in terrains that are like insane. Um, I don't know how it goes with hunting, but I'm sure it's it's also exciting for that part because it's. It's, it's quite wild out there, you know? Um, so yeah, it, that was the idea. And uh, the magnetism word is because, yeah, the, when, when, when you get this kind of, of thunder uh, feel in the air, it's so magnetic and so electric, uh, especially in the desert and comes the rain and comes the smell and uh, you know, it's a whole deal that again, you have to experience to understand, but you guys know. <laughs> it is, it's beautiful. Yeah. And it is, it, the, the name behind it is so powerful because mm. it really is, people have grown up in Arizona, that magnetism, it's like you're drawn here. Mm. The people that live here and love it here are really just drawn to Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, and that takes me kind of to my next question is, why is Arizona so important to you? And, and why does Arizona mean so much to you? Mm -hmm. well, that's a good question. Um, it's written in my arm. And uh, it's, it's always been maybe the most iconic uh, state in my French brain, <laughs> you know. Also, when I traveled here, um, when I was 15, I did this road trip with my uncle and that's when I discovered America. 
and uh, I, I believe that, that Arizona, maybe just the word itself, Arizona, with the Z letter in it, and there's something very powerful about the word, and then the landscape, they're actually, you know, on this state, I would call it, but it's a piece of land, pretty much, uh, has, yeah, some of the most iconic, I mean, Utah is pretty incredible too, but there is something about Arizona that really um, always attracted me. And um, I had a feeling that I would spend more and more time here, and here I am living here. So it's, yeah, it, it is a special place, very special. Going into those iconic Marc Marjorie clouds, mm -hmm. kind of take us through the, the, like the process of how long do those take you? How do you find, how do you create such an exact replica? I mean, it, it almost, your clouds almost look better than <laughs> than actual clouds. It's it's unbelievable. Well, thanks. Um, well, I get in the zone with the clouds, and uh, it's there is something really hypnotic about clouds, and and something very uh, how do you say a cloud doesn't remain, which is the most incredible thing about it. And when you witness those thunderhead how they form, and they you know if you do a time lapse of it, you see how quick they move. And, and people sometimes don't notice, just, you know, look up and, oh, it's a nice cloud, and they keep on going, do about their thing. But it's, it's crazy if you, like, sit down and stare at it, and, you know, like, kind of see how it evolves, and it pops, and it kind of, you know, and most, and especially at the end of the day, when they get hit like that, and they become yellow and pink, and then when the sun goes down, even if the cloud was so impressive, the minute when the sun goes down it just becomes some kind of like dark it, it's gone and it's insane like the the theory of like what the light can do to that thing is mind-blogging I and mean, i still try to understand how it works and even if i studied it so much it's there's still a a mystery about it and um yeah i think it's one of the things it's like a rock is a rock a rock is has a different power, but it's it, it's there. It changes with the light, but it's you can touch it. The clouds are it's the most you know like ephemeral thing that you can find. It's just it's like water. It's just like so. I love that that it's just like a magic you know trick that somebody's doing on us. Hey, look what I can do! And then, <laughs> so yeah, I love it. Can you take us through some of your creative process and? and how long it takes you on average to complete a painting from start to finish? Um, yeah, so I, I do those trips where I meet people and I arrange that and, and I'm doing this more and more to put myself in, a, in an experience to soak it in and usually I go to a land or a place that uh, I'm attracted to and I'm trying to meet or bring the people that we belong to that plan so I can really understand, you know, what, what it is uh, in order to paint it the proper way. Uh, I haven't done that always. I didn't start like that. When I started, I was just, I didn't, I learned a lot as I went about, you know, different things. And so I, I need to do this. I need to experience something to like feel it inside my heart and then I can paint it. Uh, that's the example with that painting here on the easel. It's this whole emotion that I had when I experienced this moment. Um, I couldn't have made this up like just like that. It, you know, I have to be there and, and experience it. That, that was one of the reasons I, I had this whole talk about, you know, the AI and when people were talking about, oh, you know, using AI for references and I was like, well, you can, but you're going to miss the human part. And it's really, I think that's what we have left as human is, is the experience and the feeling that we have when we're out there doing whatever we do. And you guys hunt, there's nobody can, you know, you can't replace that feeling, the thrill that you have to being there. Like if you play a video game of hunting, it's different, you know, <laughs> than when you're there. So it's the same with painting, like exact same thing. You need to be there to feel it, and then you can paint it simple as that <laughs> so yeah the, the time is 
I usually do this photo shoot and then I come back and I, I look at my pictures and try to like, I don't jump on it. I let them see it, I go back at it, I look at it and then somehow one day I have like, okay, this image is really in my mind, I'm gonna look at it. So I pull it out, start drawing it, see if you know it works and then start looking at if I need to change the landscape, if I need to, you know, get, when I'm on the photo shoot, I take photo of people, but I also take people, photo of the land and, you know, the bushes, the vegetation. And so I play with all that to make a perfect composition. And um, so that takes a while because it, again, I could be working for an hour and then another hour, but that would be spread about three weeks or months or something when the image is like forming somehow. And then when I start painting, I usually paint for about an average of three weeks per painting. Sometimes it's longer. The one at top on the wall there with all the, the wagon train took me almost two months because there was so much stuff. But this one here is way faster because there's this big shadow part, which was pretty fast too, you know. But coming up with the idea is what's important. The time that you spend on the painting doesn't matter. You know, if the painting works and it, as it is, you, you know, you don't need to spend X, 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 X amount of hours. And again, I don't care. For me, it's not, it's not good when it's finished, it's finished when it's good, you know? So it's different. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so tell us about your, your next upcoming drop. Where can people uh, be able to purchase prints from you? Um, yeah, so um, I, I'm doing the, those prints twice a year um, in order to um, share my art with, you know, all people that uh, are interested in, in putting art in their house. And I noticed that it's also some kind of a bridge for people to maybe start collecting originals from me or other artists. But it's, yeah, I, I have a lot of people who told me that they had no, never had any art, you know, whatsoever. And it's the first time they are, there's something that speaks to them because like you said, they're from Arizona, Utah, Texas, and somehow it brings them a feeling which is the point of an art piece in your house is to have, you know, you, you're gonna look at it so many times during the day, during the night, during all the times of your life when you're home. And so that, that piece of art lives with you. Um, so yeah, I do that twice a year and uh, it's 36 hours online uh, and it's, it's fun. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Cause I was working on that and then my and then my daughter gets in a little bike accident and here we go to the ER oh. and all that. <laughs> She's fine, but it was a I didn't finish Sunday. Yeah, I love it.